So firstly, Sunday of course marks the first anniversary of the 4th of September event and it's been a very uh, long year but also a year that seems to have passed on, a, on the other hand quite quickly um, and you know, the, the uh, 7,000, uh, nearly 400 event, uh, earthquake events or part, earthquakes we've had as part of this event uh, I think have kept everybody pretty much on their toes um, to mark the event and to recognise that this is very, very big for New Zealand. Um, the Cabinet will be meeting in Christchurch, as you know, on Monday. It's the first time in 16 years that the Cabinet has met outside of, Christ, uh, outside of Wellington. Uh, and that is to indicate very strongly to people here that the effort that the Government uh, uh, sees the province making, the Greater Christchurch area making, uh, will continue to be matched by, by Government's commitment uh, to regrowth in this uh, part of New Zealand. Um, you saw earlier this week uh, the announcement from us that the EQC liability is estimated to have more than doubled uh, from the, the estimates made early in the year. That should largely be seen as a positive. Uh, while it has a negative effect on the Government's fiscal position going forward, we're talking about funding that we have and acknowledging that we are going to spend cash that is in hand. And it puts us back to about the position in 1993 when the, the disaster fund was started, uh, the government effectively uh, backing up any future events uh, over and above the, uh, or up to the EQC cap before their reinsurance kicks in um, while that disaster fund is rebuilt over time. And there should be no fervour about having to do things in a hurry. The reality is that any sovereign nation has the capacity to tax and to levy at any time uh, the Parliament approves it. And so we need to, need to go about uh, looking at the future for that fund in a very, very uh, well considered way uh, and in a way that makes sure that whatever model uh, we persevere with uh, is going to be sustainable in the long term. In the meantime, New Zealanders remain covered and Cantabrians can be confident that their claims will be met. Next Wednesday, I uh, head off to uh, London and then Monte Carlo. Uh, Largely, well, entirely to speak to uh, reinsurers and insurers about the picture here in Canterbury. We don't expect that there will be some magic bullet come out of this. Nothing around this event has been like that. It is just part of the steady progress that we need to make uh, in ensuring that there is uh, everything in place to effect a solid recovery. So uh, we'll be presenting information about uh, the, ge the, 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 the geotechnical uh, investigation here, the, the ongoing seismic risk here, uh, as well as uh, the way in which we're going about uh, the rebuild with stronger codes on more seismically resistant land, uh, and making sure that they understand too that the Canterbury economy uh, is still intact, that it is a $27 billion a year economy and growing, uh, and will continue to grow meaning that uh, this is a dynamic part of the country well worth uh, ensuring in the future. Uh, Roger's going to talk about um, the, the red zone offer and settlement process from a government perspective. Uh, we think that that is being well accepted uh, and that people are doing the right thing in uh, seeking enough time to make sure that they get the option that is best for them. Uh, and um, we are also looking at uh, trying to get as, as much of the orange zone uh, reclassified as possible as quickly as possible. But I want to reiterate that these are not simple decisions and the uh, longer, the, well, I suppose that the, once we get through the larger areas uh, those decisions potentially become uh, more complex. In some cases they'll become a lot simpler. But given that you're talking about the lifetime assets of people, uh, we, we do not want to be rushed into making a decision that could be to the detriment of, uh, of property owners. Um, with those comments, uh, I'll hand over to Roger Sutton uh, and we'll take questions at the end of the presentations from Reid and um, uh, Warwick. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. My focus is very much at the moment um, is on the land issues. As the Minister said, we're working through getting those land issues resolved as quickly as possible. And one of the ways I, I express it is um, many of the areas where the land has been deemed redwise, if you like, it's very, it is very badly damaged. 
and it was, it's pretty clear that the land can't be fixed at a reasonable cost within a reasonable period of time. The orange areas, it's a lot more subtle. Think about it like the car, the red car is just really badly damaged. You know, you can see after a period of time that it's very, very badly dented, it's twisted. The orange cars are scratched, they're buckled, they're a bit bent. And, you know, we're trying to work out to what extent that land can be fixed. A lot of these areas, the orange areas, the land is, well, every, every bit of land is special, but for a lot of these places, the land has got special characteristics. It's, it's South Shore, people live along rivers, and people want us to make the right sort of decisions. People don't want us just, you know, having a, having a quick go and, um, and not doing the proper work. But we're very mindful that people are very anxious to get their decisions as quickly as possible. The same with the stuff on the Port Hills. We're also trying to work through that as quickly as we can, but I don't have any further updates about timing on those. But we are keen on getting those decisions made just as fast as we can. We know there's a lot of anxiety out there. And we've been working through getting these formal, the formal documentation out to people so we can buy their land off them. Um, as, of, as of today, we've sent out, as of today, we're sending out about another thousand um, formal documents out to people so that they can then work through them with their lawyers. Um, we've also been updating our questions and answers. We've, as people ans ask more questions and answers, we're updating those. Um, the numbers are, I think, of the 6,100 residential properties, 1,500 properties still haven't returned their consent form. So the consent form doesn't actually allow us to buy their property, it merely allows us to talk to their insurance company and EQC so we can make sure we've got all their information so we can do the, so we can then send them their offer pack. So far we've got 15 completed um, offers back from people with have nominated a settlement date. So like 15 people have said, right, here you go, here's our offer, we'll sell you our property, here's the settlement date, off you go. The first settlement date someone has nominated is the 9th of September and we're, we're, we're confident we can do that. So our priority through this whole process has been to work with households where they're under um, medical issues or something like that, and we've fast-tracked, I think, 40 or 50 people who've, who've said they've got those, those sorts of issues. But so far, I'm really happy that we are keeping up with the demands around that. These people are living under a lot of stress, and it's important we do actually deal with them properly. In terms of our support services, um, we've got this new um, earthquake assistance centre at the Avondale Golf Club. Um, so far we've had nearly um, 300 people through that, through that centre. That's a centre with we're there, EQC are there, insurance companies are there, the temporary accommodation service is there, I think um, the community law people are there, um, and that's proved, that proves to be a great place to have face-to-face -face and try and get some of these issues resolved. Kaiapoi have also got their own hub and they've had nearly 500 people through their hub, but over 500 and nearly half the people there are aged over 65 and most of them want to talk about insurance issues. You know, for a lot of people it's a very stressful, difficult time and for, especially the elderly, talking, doing all this over the phone doesn't really work for them and they want to be able to do it face to face. We're also working with the lawyers. Um, so far we've got 125 lawyers have, have registered to be able to use our system to be able to do transactions around the stuff and we've spent a lot of time getting these lawyers up to speed as well. Um, last week, or the week we've just been in, I went out and we did a number of public meetings in Kaiapoi on Tuesday and Thursday. About 900 people turned up. Um, some of the people um, are unhappy. People want, people want more answers. They want, um, you know, they're, they're worried about their futures. Um, there's frustration with, um, with um, insurers. There's frustration about a lack of land in Kaiapoi. Um, and what we said there was we are working at Cerro. With, with the Waimak District Council, we're also working with the airport company around their issues to try and give those people um, confidence there's actually going to be more land coming to market relatively soon there. But clearly there's a lot of people, and especially in that Kaiapoi area, who want to stay in the area. And for Kaiapoi it's particularly difficult because there's five or six thousand houses in Kaiapoi and nearly, you know, something nearly, I think it's 900 Minister. 900 have turned red so far, so that has a very, very big impact on that community, and it's a tight community. I hope within a week or so to come out with, if you like, some milestones of timing by which more land is going to come to market in Canterbury. Give people the confidence. We are going to use our special powers if we need to. We need to map out that map so people can clearly see how long it's going to be 
before large amounts of new land is on the market. And I want to come out with that within one or two weeks. The other stuff we're doing is we're doing a lot of work um, thinking about um, how we can move perfectly good houses. They can be picked up and moved to new sites. We're doing a lot of work around that so people can have confidence that can happen. And we're also thinking about things like um, how can we work with property developers to do leasehold land. You know, are there some people who are actually quite happy not to own the land outright? Are there ways of them leasing land that allows them to get into properties where they do feel they can, they can get something they're really happy with but they won't necessarily have full ownership of the land? We're doing work around that as well. So there's a whole series of work streams here to try and give people confidence that when they finally do have to move off their land in 18 months, two years time, they can actually go somewhere where they feel they're going to be safe and secure. I guess the other thing around that is we need to make sure the land they go to has got the right um, geotechnical characteristics. It's all very well moving people being able to buy a bit of land, but if they think it's going to have those same poor characteristics they've been living on, we haven't done much for them. Um, communication stuff, we've been doing the stuff in the press. Um, these inserts in the press, and I think that's gone down pretty well. We're looking at a Sarah update, which will be newspaper style. And there's various things we've done on the web. Some of you will have seen um, the YouTube clip with um, Jan Kupi talking about the, the sand boils and so on. I hope some of you would have been a bit more active and would have had a look at those. But we've had like nearly 8,000 hits on that. But we're just trying to put it into sort of in a, in a style and a language people, people will, will understand. But I think overall our website, we're getting about 10,000 hits each week on our website and there have been nearly 9 million hits on the Land Check website. So that's... Um, that's pretty significant. But there's a lot more we can be doing around the communications and we'll continue to gear that up. I was talking to the ethnic leaders last night and there's concern that we're not getting enough information out there in different languages. There's a lot more work to be done there.